I've shown you how to create a ruby gem in past episodes, most recently in episode 245. But here I want to show you the entire process involved in making a gem. Uh, I will do this across two episodes. The first episode here, I will show you how to extract it from an existing application and to test it. And then later on, I will show you how to uh, publish it and share it with the world. So in this episode, I will be extracting this bit of code right here inside of this comment model into a Ruby gem. And what this does is uh, handle some formatting and validation of the URL that the user inputs. First, let me show you how this works. I have a blogging application here where I have an article and one can add comments into this. And when they type in the URL, let's say they type in an invalid URL when they're adding their comment. And then when they try to create their comment, it now says it's an invalid URL. But if they type in a valid one, they don't even have to put in the HTTP uh, protocol there. They could just create it and it will automatically create it. And when it saves it into the database, it will add that HTTP protocol automatically for you. Now that logic is all handled by this bit of code right here that I would like to extract out into a Ruby gem so that I can use in other applications. Now it's a good idea to always extract a gem from an existing application, so that way you have a good idea of the requirements and what level of abstraction to use. And otherwise, it's just a guessing game. Rails itself was even extracted from an existing application. Well, let's get started in making the gem. I will be using Bundler here to create the gem like I did in episode 245, and you can do that with Bundle, Gem, and then the name of the gem. Let's call it URL Formatter. And you can see that generated a gem for us, so let's open it up and check it out. So here's what our gem project looks like with the files Bundler generated. And one of the first things you should do is go into your gem spec and fill in these to-do lines with the necessary information. I'll do that here. There we go, that looks good. And now notice Bundler keeps the version number in a separate file from this gem spec here. It's under the lib directory, under URL formatter, version.rb. Now one thing I like to do when I'm working on a specific version release, I like to append .alpha to the end of the version number so that way they know that this version is still under development. And then when I'm ready to release it, I'll just remove this or maybe uh, release a beta or release candidate version first before I release the full version. Also, don't be afraid to release version 1.0 once you feel it is production ready and it has a stable API. A great article on versioning is at semver.org called Semantic Versioning. If you haven't checked this out yet, definitely read it. The next step I like to take isn't to start coding away, but to actually write the README. And this is uh, called README Driven Development, and there's a popular article on it by Tom Preston Warner that I'll link to in the show notes. And I'll just paste this README content into here. And this way we have a clear idea of what exactly the interface will look like to the user. And this is starting at the very high level. You can see here that we want this gem to be a simple install through Bundler, and we just want a simple format URL method that the user can add to their uh, active record model to uh, format and validate the URL. Now, another thing we need here is a license. So I'll just uh, create a new license file in here and just paste in the license here. I always use the MIT license. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is set up RSpec because that's what I like to use for testing. So I'm going to define RSpec as a development dependency inside of the gem spec file here. And you can see that there's even a line here that I can just uncomment to add RSpec as a development dependency. And then I can run the bundle command to install RSpec. And then I want to make it default to displaying the output in color. So I can do that by echoing dash dash color into the dot RSpec file. And RSpec will read that as the default options. And while we're here, I will also make a directory under spec slash URL formatter and also make a spec spec helper file here. Now what I want to do inside of the spec helper file is just to load the URL formatter. So that will load the uh, lib URL formatter file. And I could also throw in a uh, configure block in here for RSpec, but I don't really need to yet. And if I want to run RSpec through rake, I can go into my rake file here and paste in a few lines to load up the RSpec rake task and make it the default task. So now running the rake command will run RSpec but currently we don't have any spec files, so let's make one. Now going back to our Rails application in the comment model here, you can see that most of the logic is inside of these two class methods here, which are sort of like utility methods that we can just toss into any module in the gem. So let's move these on over, but first we actually want to uh, move the specs over, and I actually already have specs for all of this logic inside of my Rails application. So let me just copy and paste this entire file here. 
So back inside of our gem here, let's move that code inside of a spec file in our spec directory. Let's call it a URL formatter spec.rb. And then I will paste that code into here. Now most of these examples here are for those two class methods which I showed you earlier. But these two examples up here are specific to Active Record and how it handles the saving and validations. So let's not handle those for now and just do the, uh, the two class methods here. Now we don't want these methods to find on the comment model inside of our gem. Instead we want them to find in the URL formatter module right here. And so we can do a quick find and replace here to uh, change all those occurrences. There we go. So now when we run our tests, all those methods will fail because we don't have those two methods defined on our module. That's easy enough to fix by just copying those methods from our Rails application into the actual gem here, just pasting them inside of the URL formatter module. And now when we run our specs, they all pass. Yay! All right, so back into our Rails application, we've successfully moved this logic into our Ruby gem, so we won't be needing that in our Rails app anymore. But what about this right here, where it handles the uh, formatting and validation of the actual uh, attribute on the active record model? Well, since this is active record specific, we'll need to place it in another location in our Ruby gem. And the way we want it to work, remember in our readme, we have this method called format URL, and then we pass it maybe an attribute such as website, and that will actually handle all the validations and formatting on that attribute uh, dynamically generating that validation and before validation uh, callback. Now whenever I need to make an active record class method like this in my gem, I like to move it into a module called model additions. So inside of our Ruby gem, let's start by defining that spec file called model additions inside of the URL formatter file here called model additions uh, spec.rb. Now I've already written the spec for this functionality in my application. It is these two examples right up here. So I can just copy and paste this into my Ruby gem here inside of that model edition spec file that I just created. Now I'm not describing comment here, I want to describe the uh, URL formatter model additions module that I'll be creating here. Now we have a problem here though, and that is that these examples rely on a comment model which we don't have access to in our Ruby gem. We don't even load active record at all in this Ruby gem, but there are a couple of nice solutions to handle this situation. What I'm going to do here is use this gem called a supermodel, which is really great if you need to test the interaction between your Ruby gem and something like active record. What it does is it uses active model internally with an in-memory based store, so it kind of simulates active record without actually having to set up an entire database. Now alternatively, if you do need to use Active Record with a database in your gem specs, you may consider another gem called with model, and I'll link to that in the show notes. But Supermodel will work well for us here because this gem needs to only interact with validations and callbacks, which are inside of Active Model. So what I need to do is go inside of the gem spec here and add another developer dependency for Supermodel, and then make sure to run the bundle command to install the gem. Next, I'll go inside of the spec helper file here and require supermodel so it loads that up. So now we can use supermodel to simulate this active record comment model. So let me make a new class here called comment and have it inherit from supermodel base so it uses supermodel. Now to truly simulate what we're doing in the Rails applic application here, we need to call format URL and then pass in website so that way it acts like what it did in our Rails application. And that format URL method is something we still have yet to define, and that's going to be defined in the model additions module. So this is something that I'm going to have to extend onto here because that method is not inherently going to be, avail be available to us inside of our supermodel class here. Now we can try this out by running our specs, and we get an error message here saying it doesn't know what model additions is because this is a module which we have yet to define. So let's make this module under the URL formatter directory here under the lib directory. It's called modeladditions.rb. So this will need to go inside of that URL formatter module and is called uh, modeladditions. And so let's make that uh, format URL method here which takes the name of an attribute. And so inside of here we'll need to handle the validations and formatting, but let's just try this for now. Now files aren't auto-loaded inside of a Ruby gem here, so it's up to us to actually include them inside of the URL formatter base file here. It's called model additions, 
so that way it loads that file. So now when we run our specs, you can see that we get two failing examples here, and that's what we expect because we haven't actually implemented any functionality yet. It's not doing the URL formatting properly, and it's not validating it properly either. So we need to implement this format URL method so it handles the formatting and the validation. And I'll just paste in the logic that we had in our Rails application here because it's basically the same thing, but we do need to change this a bit because instead of calling website directly, we need to make this dynamic depending on the attribute that's passed in here. So to do that, we can call send wherever we're calling a method like website. So we can say send, and then it's going to be the name of the attribute followed by an equal sign to set it. And then we want it to set it to the format call, which is going to be on the URL formatter module because we made that class method there. And then we're going to call send attribute here because that will actually be uh, the attribute of the website. And so the same goes down here. We want to uh, use attribute instead of website there. And we want to call URL regular expression as that class method on our URL formatter module. And we can leave the message as a static for now, but you may want to add an option to change that. So now when we run our specs, you can see it's now erroring out here. And it's doing that because it says undefined method before validation. So this is actually an issue with Supermodel because it doesn't completely simulate all of Active Record or Active Model. It uh, seems to be lacking some callbacks for the validation. And fortunately, this is an easy fix. To fix this, we just have to go inside of the comment supermodel class here and call include active model validations callbacks. And that will include that before validation callback for us so we don't get that undefined method. So now when we run our specs again, looks like they all pass now. So our gem is now functionally complete and now behaves like our Rails application did. However, there is one more piece of the puzzle that we have to add to our gem to get this all working. If you look back in the Rails application inside of the comment model here, you can see what I want to do is just directly call format URL instead of manually having to include the model additions inside of our URL formatter. So to be able to do this, somewhere I'm going to have to automatically include our model additions into Active Record Base so that we don't have to manually include them every time we want to use it. Now, whenever you want to load something into Rails like this, you should use a rail tie. And there's an excellent article on rail ties in the engine yard blog here. Basically a rail tie allows you to add an initializer call, which allows you to add a behavior into a rails application. So we could, for example, here add the model additions to active record from inside of an initializer. So inside of our Ruby gem here, let's add a rail tie. I'll put this under the lib URL formatter here. Let's call it rail tie.rb. So this needs to go under the URL formatter module, and it's a class called RailTie, and it needs to inherit from Rails RailTie. So in here we need to make an initializer, and we'll give it a unique name such as URL formatter model additions, and then add a block to this. So this block will be called when the Rails application starts up, and there's a great way to add functionality to Active Record here through Active Support. So we could call Active Support dot on load and call uh, active record and then once active records loaded this will actually get executed in the scope of active record base so we can call extend directly into here and say model additions so this way it'll extend the url formatter model additions module directly into active record so this is all we need to do inside of this rail tie here but this file won't be included automatically, so we need to require it inside of the URL formatter file here, like we do the other files. But we only want to include it if it's defined, or actually if Rails is defined, so that way it's not always included, especially when we run our specs. Which brings up a point. Notice I didn't test this rail tie file. I usually don't because it's somewhat of a hassle to do a high-level integration test through our entire Rails app inside of a Ruby gem like this, and I preferred to do that kind of testing outside of the gem inside of a separate Rails application. However, you may want to add some high-level integration tests for your rail tie file if you're concerned about that. Now, before releasing a gem, it's a good idea to first test it out in your Rails application. So here I am in the gem file of our Rails app, and at the bottom here, I'm just going to add that gem called URL Formatter. Now, since it's not actually hosted anywhere yet, I need to specify the path option 
to the local path on my local hard drive. So I can say it's under code URL formatter and it will find the gem there. That way we could try it out without actually creating the gem. Now our application is pretty much already set up to use this gem. The comment model already has that format URL call. That looks correct. But we do need to adjust the comment specs a bit because right now it has all these other tests which we don't really need because that is already handled inside of the gem. So we can delete that. I'm going to keep these couple of other tests just to ensure that it's integrated properly into our Rails application. Now we can try this out by running the bundle command inside of our Rails application to ensure it links up the URL formatter dependency properly with our local file path. Looks like that's working. Now let's try running our specs and see if they pass. And it looks like they do, so it looks like that is working. Let's start up our server and see if it works there. So let's give this a try by going to our comments again and entering a new comment here with a bad URL. And then try creating this. And then we get our validation like we expect because it's an incorrect URL, but if we type in a correct one, then it will work. Looks great. Well, that's it for now. We've successfully extracted this logic out into a Ruby gem and hooked it all up into our Rails application but we have yet to actually publish this gem and share it with the world. And that's what I will be covering in the next pro episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.